The analytical exercise involves conducting multiple regression analysis in Excel. In order to do that, you need to have the analysis tool pack activated. This comes installed with your Excel software. So to find out if you have it installed or not, click on the data tab in the Excel ribbon and you'll see the data analysis section. Now, if it looks grayed out like this, like it's something you can't click on and select, then you need to take the following steps to activate your analytical add-in. First, you will click Tools and then Add-ins. All right, so click on Tools and then click on Add-ins. The Add-ins window will open and it will show you the add-ins that you have available. Click on the Analysis Tool Pack and then click OK. Next, close the Excel program and reopen it. Click on the Data tab again, and now you should see the Data Analysis section activated to where you can click on it. And so here in the sample worksheet, I'm going to click on Data, I click on Data Analysis, and then it gives me the options for the different statistical analyses that I can conduct. Of course, we will be conducting regression analysis, and we will talk more about what is the data input for these various sections next. Next, we will conduct the multiple regression analysis. I'll click Data, Data Analysis, Regression, OK. Now we specify where the data is for the dependent variable, which is the Y range, and the independent variables or predictors, which is the X range. Now we are going to be conducting two separate regression analyses, one for the high income and one for the low income group. I have separate headers for each one. And I'm going to specify now that the variable that we are trying to predict, the Y, is this one right here, intention. And so I include the label with the uh, range of values. And then the X range is all of our independent variables, which are these three right here. Make sure that labels is clicked and confidence level should be 95%. That gives us that 5% p-value. And then the output range. So you tell Excel where you want the output to appear. So I've selected this area over here. And then you click OK. And there is your output. One additional step, which just makes things clearer and easier to interpret, is to come over here and click Number. And then that puts everything uh, to two decimal points. And so everything's a lot cleaner and easier to interpret. So one of the first things that we want to look at is the ANOVA table, the Analysis of Variance table which basically tells us whether the regression of intentions on these three factors was significant. So in other words, do these three things together significantly predict intention? And here we have our p-value, and we can see that it is less than 0 0.05, so that means that, yes, these three factors, as uh, following the theory, uh, indeed do uh, predict intentions. And then we look here under regression statistics, we will look at the R square, and this will tell us how much of the variance in intention, in other words, how much of the variation in intention scores is predicted by the scores on attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control. So how closely for each person who completed this uh, survey did their intention score line up with their attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control? In this case, it's 0.92, so that's 92%. So 92% of the variation in intentions can be explained in this data set by these three variables. Now, it's not usually that high, uh, but in this particular case, we have a low number of uh, observations and, and everything aligned pretty pretty closely. Next we want to look at the coefficients, and these are our standardized coefficients. 
And the intercept's going to be zero because we standardized everything. The mean is zero that you can ignore. What we're going to look at is the the regression coefficients for our three factors. So attitude, subjective norm, perceived behavior control. Interpreting standardized regression coefficients is a little bit different than interpreting uh, unstandardized coefficients. And uh, the description is provided here. So the standardized regression coefficient, or beta, indicates the number of standard deviations that the dependent variable, in this case purchase intention ratings, will increase or decrease given a one standard deviation increase in the independent variable, which it's uh, these three. The size of the coefficient indicates the relative importance of the coefficient in the regression model or the weight of its influence on the dependent variable intentions. So again, this is just so you understand uh, the statistical side of this analysis. So for example, if we take the coefficient for this independent variable, attitude, and this 0.2 refers to how much the dependent variable will change given a one standard deviation change in attitude. All right, so in this case it's positive. So the dependent variable, which is intention, will increase by 0.2 standard deviations. So this is one standard deviation in intention. It is 0.8 of a uh, rating point. Okay, so multiply that times 0.2, and that is how much intentions will increase if attitudes increase by one standard deviation. And how much is one standard deviation for attitude? It is a 1.7 rating point change. So if one attitude increases uh, by 1.7, then the intention to perform the behavior increases by uh, one-fifth of this standard deviation right here of 0.8. Okay, so it's about 0.16. And then the same goes for these others. So for subjective norm, we have a negative 0.2. So that's an inverse relationship. So in this particular case, for the high income consumers, the higher the subjective norm, or the stronger the subjective norm, the weaker the intention. So we have maybe a little bit of uh, reactance against the social pressure. So you're feeling social pressure, so you're going to do the opposite rather than conforming. Uh, and so that's what seems to be happening here for the high income segment. And so the interpretation is similar. So for a one standard deviation increase in subjective norm, which is equal to this uh, much increase in ratings, 1.4, this will be the change in intention. So it will go down by one-fifth of this, uh, this value right here. And then perceived behavioral control is a positive relationship. So for every standard deviation increase in perceived behavioral control, which is a, a, a 1.5 rating point change, this, um, the intentions will increase by almost one whole standard deviation. So there will be just about a 0.8 increase, uh, which on a scale from one to seven is, is pretty good, right? So that means that perceived behavioral control has a very strong influence. And really that's, again, that's just the, um, the statistical interpretation of what these regression coefficients mean. What we're primarily interested in is what this tells us about the relative influence and the weight of the influence of each of these um, independent variables in terms of predicting intentions. So for your assignment, I don't really expect you to go into that uh, explanation that I just went into about the one standard deviation increase and decrease and all that. Uh, that's just more for your uh, understanding of what this means statistically, but we will focus on the substantive 
interpretation, meaning the relative weights of these independent variables so that we can determine which is most influential, in this case, subjective norm and perceived behavioral control are most influential uh, up here. It's perceived behavioral control that's most influential. And so that would be the focus uh, in terms of trying to influence uh, by increasing people's intentions to purchase the product. And so what we see here is that uh, attitude and subjective norm, they have about 0.2 score, so that's a pretty strong influence. And then perceived behavioral control has the strongest relative influence right here. So we would look at our perceived uh, behavioral control average up here. And uh, here we're focusing on the high income group. And so we see that it's a 4.1 out of 14. So this would be where we would want to focus our uh, efforts and our resources to develop a marketing mix tactic that could increase a person's perceived behavioral control regarding uh, having uh, sharing or, or recommending that their friend or their family member register for a timeshare presentation in exchange for a free hotel night. Uh, advertising campaign or a social media campaign, uh, just to make it seem effortless, like it's very easy, very casual, it's not a big deal, it's totally doable, and so that would increase perceived behavioral control, which would then increase the intention, which we can see is pretty pretty low here, so 2.1 out of 7. Now we can see that the for the low income group, the intention is 6.6 .6 out of 7, so they are already pretty high in their intentions to, to do this, but it's helpful to see what is contributing to that. So now we're going to conduct a regression analysis with the low income group. So I'll go to data, data analysis, regression, and now the Y range is not going to be up here, it's going to be down here. So this is why we needed to have the labels uh, for this section separate because it's going to be included. And then the X range is down here as well. For the output, we don't want it to be on top of the, uh, the other results, so we're going to move it down here so it appears below. Labels are, are uh, checked off, confidence level 95%, we're good to go. Remember to change this to numeric output, so you just have two decimal places. And then again, we're going to look at the p-value in the ANOVA table, less than 0.05, so we're good there. So that means the three factors significantly predicted intentions. We will look at our R-square over here, so that's 92% of the um, variance is predicted by the three variables. And that's, that's, that's very strong. And then we will look at the coefficients. And for the low income consumers, uh, we see different numbers here, uh, but they're all positive. So here, for example, subjective norm has a positive influence on intention. So here, the low income consumers, uh, they are more likely to conform to the social pressure. And so uh, again, with attitude, a one standard deviation increase in attitude. So now we're looking at the low income group right here. So if attitudes increase by 1.7 rating points, then the intentions will increase again by about a fifth of this value right here. Okay, because we're dealing with this row for the low income. And then the subjective norm, if subjective norm increases by one standard deviation, which is two rating points, then the intentions will increase by 0.42 of this amount. And the same goes for perceived behavioral control. If perceived behavioral control increased by one standard deviation, so 1.6 rating points, then intentions will increase by 0.4 of this amount. All right, so now here we have 
very different coefficients than we had up here. The attitude component has about the same amount of influence, uh, but subjective norm and perceived behavioral control are even. So both of these have about an equal amount of influence and they're both pretty strong influence, 0.4. And so we would look up here at the averages and we would see that these right here are both 11.8 out of 14. Uh, so since those are the strongest contributors, if we wanted to increase this even more, you know, even though it's already pretty high, uh, then we would focus on one or the other or both uh, with our marketing mix tactics. The next step would then be to explain what the results mean. So we would describe for the low income group, the strongest predictors perceived behavioral control and that perceived behavioral control for this group is a low, that it's a four out of 14. So that is where we need to focus our marketing strategy to increase that in order to increase the intentions, which are very low as well, a two out of seven. And then you would propose and defend a specific marketing mix tactic, whether it's an advertising campaign, a social media campaign, uh, whatever it may be, uh, and you want to give some appropriate detail so that then you can explain how that is going to affect perceived behavioral control. And then you would go to the second group and you would explain that for the low income uh, participants, the subjective norm and perceived behavioral control exerted about an equal amount of influence and it's a strong influence. And then you would interpret the uh, averages. And so we would look that over here and see that perceived uh, behavioral control is about a 12 out of 14, so a subjective norm, so that has a little bit of room to improve. And so, uh, you know, you would decide whether your marketing mix tactic will focus on both or on one, or on one and then uh, describe what change, uh, what the tactic would be with the detail and justify how that would influence this. Now, in reality, uh, it wouldn't be a good use of marketing dollars to try and uh, increase this intention because it already is pretty high, but definitely uh, we'd want to work on, on this intention right here.